Today I want to introduce a fresh pasta that contains eggs, but today I wanted to show you the real deal, the fresh pasta Perfect. with the fresh eggs. Completely homemade. Completely homemade. The only machine I've asked you to bring is the pasta machine, okay. because we need to roll and do the tagliatelle, but believe it or not, I will show you as well how to do tagliatelle with a chopping board and a knife without machine. Of course, like our grandmothers did, right? How we did the pasta before otherwise. Basically, when you don't have a machine, you create a fountain with your flour and we use eggs. At this time, I'm doing just 250 grams. It's just for, for two of us, so I think it's more than enough. What I do generally, I mix the egg with the white and red together and we put right in the middle, okay? I know it's, it's a bit slow, this process, but trust me, it's the best way to incorporate the eggs with the flour, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, otherwise, if you don't want to do it in this way, Another way to do it, use a bowl, plastic mm -hmm. generally is better, mm -hmm. and you put everything inside and you mix with your hands. Mm -hmm. it's, a bit, it's definitely more messy than this. Mm -hmm. Leave it to me now. I keep going. We want all the flour to be absorbed with the eggs. I don't know how hard it has to be. So basically, I will show you now. Remember, yeah. the pasta with the eggs is like a muscle, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's got protein. The pasta is done, you should touch, and this come back to normal. So, done, Tatiana. This one can go straight to the fridge, just a bit of clean film. If you don't put clean film, it, the dough get dry. And we're gonna rest for half an hour. Why does it have to go to the fridge? Because it contains eggs. Uh -huh. So the pasta needs to rest, Perfect. okay? Pasta is rest, it's time now to roll it. Basically, what I suggest is cut the dough in four parts, and start to work one by one. What I suggest also, when you don't use something, put wet cloth on it so the pasta don't get dry. Okay. Always have a bit of flour on the side. With a rolling pin, flat a bit the dough because it cannot go in the pasta when it's so big. The machine is about a few millimeters, so reduce as much as you can. And then we start to roll it. Use always a bit of flour on top, not too much, so it doesn't stick. two times and we go. You see? At this stage, when the pasta is nice and thin, we have this particular uh, part of the machine, which I call cutter, and we got two types, tagliolini, mm -hmm. tagliatelle, o fettuccine. Mm -hmm. It's the pasta we are going to do today. So make sure you dust a bit the pasta before it goes to the machine, and sometimes put a bit of flour here through the rolls, okay? And it's very simple now. Just be careful, don't stretch. Pasta is coming, are you ready? Yeah. Done. I suggest you, after the pasta is out, you just grab it, one, two, three. And this is like a nest. Don't forget to put a bit of flour. That's exactly sometimes you see in the package. You can practice a bit if you like, and I'm gonna start to set up for the pesto, and I wanted to show you how we do pesto alla genovese. Enjoy. Do you need help? No, I'm okay. Okay, you're doing well. Let me help you. Actually, it's not bad. <laughs> so you need assistance for grabbing. Here we go. Before we prepare the pesto, I wanted to show you. This is made by machine, right? But remember, if you don't have this beautiful equipment, uh, you can do this by hand. Make sure you have a bit of flour. Don't be shy with the flour. Put a bit on top and close one, close two. Again, flour. You know, the pasta with eggs is very humid, okay? So the, 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 the flour helps you to keep that. So first remove this one, this wastage, and then we're gonna start. This is our tagliatelle, okay? But remember, this is a, a good technique when you can do different pasta. So we have pappardelle, or stay there. Maybe we can have tagliarini. But to, I know, today we are aiming this, so I that's papardelle, your tagliatelle, right? pappardelle, tagliatelle, tagliolini. Before we cook the pasta, let's do the pesto. Pesto la Genovese is very simple and is made out of few simple ingredients, but they must be good. Green basil I use for the pesto. Uh, we got pecorino romano that you believe or not is made in Sardinia, okay? We got grana padano. Do you have to mix the cheese? Yes, we will. Some pine nuts. 
Italian, some walnuts, olive oil, make sure it's extra virgin and the important part is make sure you put the olive oil in the freezer before you do the pesto. Mm. Why? Because first of all my pesto is not the way everybody does. I wanted to show you a trick and a a kind of a secret okay so basically we're gonna blanch the pesto we don't do from raw and we're gonna mix all together after the basil is cold and drained from the water then we're gonna add all the extra ingredients okay yep. you will see the color this has to be quick you just put all the basil inside the hot boiling and salty water and you boil for at least no more than a minute. The chlorophyll is come out mm -hmm. and the basil, it looks greener than it was. But to avoid this oxidation, you just need to cook the basil and put in icy water straight away so that it keeps the color. Okay. Trust me, this is a very nice recipe. Easy as it looks and fast. Because in, I believe, less than an hour you can have pesto and pasta. Let's cool down this. I'm gonna drain in a colander when it's cold and then we're gonna blend all together and I'll show you the next step. To do the best pesto, you need to start from the olive oil. Yeah. So, and remember, I put the olive oil in the freezer, okay? Because first we need to do the base, hold on. One clove of garlic, okay? So we, just like that, you don't cut it like this? No, this. because we got the blender, Perfect. yeah. Then we have... Italian. Yeah, Italian. about... 20 gram of pine nuts, I'm gonna put few walnuts, okay? And this is it for now, we're gonna start to blend, okay? That's the blend of the mix of garlic, oil, uh, olive oil, nuts, but now we can add the proper basil, okay? So I would say put a bit at the bottom. I want the olive oil. Add a bit of grana cheese, a bit of pecorino, and then I'm gonna finish to blend. Perfect. Okay? Sure. And we are ready. How much do you want me to? I would say 50 gram in that batch. Yes, perfect. I've never seen adding cheese at this at this. Point. I put at the end because I don't want to mix with the blender, mm -hmm. because this grater is good enough to make very thin. Oh. And I like to see bits and pieces in the middle. Yes. I don't like when it's a completely pesto green. Delicious. Works? Mm. But Fantastic. this one is so light. Delicious. And look at the color. You're so, right. So let's get hot boiling water, put salt, and we can place our pasta in. Now, this one gonna take about two, three minutes to cook. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we place the pesto here because the pesto will not need to be cooked as normal sauce. The pesto is a sauce on itself that has to be warm, mm -hmm. okay? Because if you make it hot, it's gonna change color. When I do pesto pasta, I like to have a bit of French beans now in the sauce because they're gonna cook together. And after we're gonna put some on the top and a bit of steamed purple potato. So you cook with the skin, uh, you put in a cold water with a bit of salt, boil, put on the side, and then you peel, okay? And this one we put at the very end with a bit of grana and a bit of pine nuts. Three minutes are passed. It's fine if you will have a bit of uh, uh, water, water. Yeah. yes. Why? You know why? No. So basically, when you cook the pasta that contains flour, what happens in the water is that is releasing a bit of starch and using a bit of water, it's gonna help you to make the sauce nice and thick. At this stage, we start to mix, okay? And if you notice it's a bit dry, and we add a bit of liquid from the pan, that is gonna help to assemble the pasta quickly. Here we go. That's our pasta, Tatiana. What I like when this is done like this, to add a bit of cheese, a bit of black pepper. Black pepper? Yes. Don't be shy with that if you like, I do. We mix again. You can use white, it's more gentle for sure. So here we go. This is our lovely pesto pasta. I love just the color of this pesto. Put something like this on top that is nice and pretty. I like to crush this potato like this. And look, 
the mix of the color green and blue. Actually, this plate is just perfect for the last bit. It looks like violet flowers, you know? I yeah. suggest if you like some pine nuts at the end. Wow. It's and our Amazing. lovely olive oil. Honestly, I love the fact that we've tried this sauce because I was always thinking that pesto sauce is quite heavy, you know, oily and it's a bit... This is a completely different sauce. Oh, you guys, I'm honestly glad. try it. It looks amazing. It looks so beautiful. You must try my pesto. I want to know your opinion. Amazing. You have to promise us something. Italian dessert next time. Wow. Of course we can. Deal. Thank you.